Hi everyone, my name is Amy and welcome to another episode of GSC at Home. Today we're going to investigate chemical reactions, what they are, where we can see them and we're even going to do our very own chemical reaction in the kitchen when we make a cake in a cup. Firstly, let's figure out what a chemical reaction is. Starting with, what is a chemical? Chemicals aren't just things found in science labs. You are made up of lots of different chemicals yourself. In fact, chemicals make up everything around us. Let's take a closer look at a chemical that we are going to use today in our experiment. It's sugar. If we were to zoom in extremely close to a grain of sugar, we would be able to see its chemical structure. The chemical name for sugar is sucrose. And now that we can see sucrose really close up, we can see that it's made up of different atoms, which are the bits that look like a ball. Everything around us is made of these atoms. They are teeny tiny and there are lots of different types of atom. Chemical reactions happen when two or more different chemicals come together and interact with each other. They might swap some of their atoms or each of the chemicals in the reaction might give up some of their atoms to make something entirely new. It's not always easy to tell if a chemical reaction has taken place, but there are usually telltale clues. This could be a change of colour or the release of some heat or light. We might get a gas given off or a new smell. We might even end up with something that looks nothing like the chemicals we use to make it. Let's think about some things that happen around your house and figure out if a chemical reaction has happened or not. If we leave an ice cube out to melt, has a chemical reaction taken place? No. While there was definitely a physical change that happened because our water changed from a solid to a liquid, we could easily gather that liquid water and change it back into a solid by freezing it into an ice cube again. Even though the state of matter changed, we still had water the entire time. Water is still water whether it is a liquid, a solid or a gas. So melting ice isn't a chemical reaction. If you leave a banana out, you will see it turns from green to yellow to brown. Do you think there is a chemical reaction happening here? Yes, there is. A chemical called ethylene, which is released by the banana, is involved in a chemical reaction inside the banana that causes a colour change as the banana ripens. Luckily for us though, bananas that are a bit too ripe can be used to make delicious banana cake. And speaking of cake, I think it's time that we get on to making our very own cake in a cup. Here is a handy list of everything you'll need. You'll need access to a microwave and a mug or teacup that is safe to use in the microwave. The cake ingredients are two and a half tablespoons of plain flour, two and a half tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of cocoa powder, and this is optional if you don't have it, that's okay, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, a pinch of salt, two tablespoons of milk, one teaspoon of vegetable or sunflower oil, one small egg, two tablespoons of chocolate chips, again, these are optional. And the last thing I recommend you get is an adult to help out with some of the trickier parts, like fetching your cake from the microwave, as it will be very hot. Okay, let's get started. In the mug, mix together the flour, sugar, cocoa powder, baking powder and salt with a fork. Add in the milk, oil, egg and chocolate chips and mix until you have a smooth batter. Now it's time to microwave our mixture. The microwave I have at home is a 700 watt microwave so I'm going to microwave my cake for about a minute and a half. If your microwave has a higher wattage it will take less time. Keep an eye on the cake as it cooks. If it has risen and is firm to the touch, your cake is ready. While our cake is in the microwave, let's think about the chemical reactions that happen when we make a cake, because there are quite a few of them. When we cook, we use heat 
which speeds up the chemical reactions happening in our food. Heating up the baking powder causes it to release tiny bubbles of gas that help to make the cake light and fluffy. Heat is also needed to cook the proteins in the egg, which go firm, which helps make the cake firm. We know for sure that we are seeing chemical reactions in action because we've made something entirely new that looks nothing like the original ingredients. We're seeing colour changes and odours are being released, definite signs of chemical reactions. And what we've made is completely different to our original ingredients. We can never change our cake back to those original ingredients, a sure sign that we have carried out some chemical reactions. Okay, I think our cake is ready to come out the microwave. As I said, this will be hot, so get an adult to help and please be careful. So I have my cake here, as you can see. Let's try it. So I've given it plenty of time to cool down because I don't want to burn my tongue. It's a good idea to get your adult helper to decide when the cake is cool enough to eat. Let's try. Mm. Delicious chocolatey cake. Amazing. If you do try making this cake at home, take a photo and send it to us at GSC via social media. We love to see you try out our experiments and activities. Why don't you try spotting any other chemical reactions that you see happening at home? How can you tell their chemical reactions? We'd love to hear your answers. Please get in touch. I hope you've had fun today making a cake and learning about chemical reactions and carrying out your own delicious chemical reaction. And I hope you continue joining us at 10am on weekdays for more GSC at home. Bye!